I think of vision also as promise. God is telling me that he sees in me that I don't see in myself. That is vision, and it's a promise that he will help me get there. Well, hi, friends. We are so glad you're here. We have been waiting a very long time. So come on in here. Get cozy because we've got a seat for you right here on the couch. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I do all of the hard stuff of living it, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Jay Williams and Aaron Cluley, three friends who are all in really different stages of life, but we really understand the value of having honest, loving women around you. And sometimes when we need help, we just ask Miss Joyce, and she is always there when we need her. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. Now's the time. Consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out together. Yes. Talk it out. How yes. exciting is this? If you are watching the video podcast, you can see us. Yes. <laughs> never fun. could before. No. Well, we are very happy to have the video podcast now as well as the audio podcast. Mm -hmm. So whatever everybody likes, you can get it just the way you want it. Yes. And today we are talking about having a vision for your life. What is your vision? And I was thinking about this, this time right now, right, of pandemic that everybody's kind of in. And it has felt like people have been on hold almost. Yeah. Um, Here's a really sad fact. Tim was watching, he so missed sports. He was watching TV the other day and it was cornhole. You know that <laughs> game you play in your backyard yeah. where you toss the bean bags? It's on TV. You cannot call that a sport, no. okay? He was watching that? He was watching it. It's so desperate. <laughs> hey, like, man. Shh, shh. He's hit <laughs> all time low. We might miss it. <laughs> so, some people, you know, are very desperate sure. for sports and entertainment, but also I think everybody feels like maybe their progress or the vision that they had for this time of their life mm -hmm. has either stopped or slowed down. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have felt that at all. Well, I haven't, but I know a lot of friends that have yeah. because of the the pandemic. People were on a good trail of mm -hmm. a lot of my friends were on a good like track of, you know, weight loss, you know, goals and business goals and just because a lot of people, you know, with 2020, they had a lot of expectations. You yeah, know, 2020 vision, 2020 yeah. vision, 2020 clarity. Yeah, you know, and 20. So everybody was having these huge expectations, mm -hmm. but then. When the pandemic happened, it did put things for a lot of people at a screeching halt. Yeah. Um, but for me, because I've I entered this year on such a, it was just kind of like shaky ground for me because it was so many things that yeah. were going on in my life. But I literally said, you know what? I refuse to allow what's going on in my life dictate how I continue to move. Yeah. You know? And so good for you. I just, this has probably been one of the scariest years of my life as far as like personal things, yeah. but the one of the most productive years mm. in years, just because, and I'm not saying this to make anyone feel, you know, bad about their progress, but I know for me, there was a determination mm -hmm. in me to say like, you know what? I know I need to stay focused on what I know God promised me and yeah. I have to do my part. Yeah. So, yeah. You've done such a good job too. It's just, well, thank it's you. been cool to watch, not to see you walk through such a terrible circumstance, but to see how you haven't lost sight of that vision. You clung to what God has for you and you are, I mean, look at you. I know. You're just I, yeah. soaring. Well, yeah. So for one thing was my um, weight loss, you know, my weight journey. Um, after I got married and had my daughter, it was just one of those things that, you know, after I had a C-section, it's like, you just feel like, ah, it's all lost now. They've torn my muscles, you know, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's all it. done, you know, mm -hmm. so I kind of gave up and I went through the postpartum depression and my daughter, keep in mind, she's 17 years old. And so that was a long time ago, but it doesn't, for my body and my mindset of what my body went through, the trauma my body went through, through that, it doesn't feel like 17 years. Yeah. It literally feels like it just happened, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then I had to have a hysterectomy a few years ago. So it's a yeah. lot of things that have happened to Your my body. has been through a lot. It's been through yeah. a lot, but then I said, you know what? This year, I'm gonna do something for myself. And I've, I, I'm still on my journey, but I've lost 25 pounds and so, well, maybe a little closer to 30, but I'm, I'm really- That's so awesome. Congratulations. Yes. So after, after we had one of our Talk It Out episodes with our friend, uh, Michelle, that, that kind of helped me too. Hmm. I was already on a journey, but that gave me, it was when she started saying like how I 
approached my weight loss journey was crashing into the love of Jesus. That was one of the things that really helped me because I was so, you know, on shaky yeah. ground with love and what that was. I'm like, I allowed Jesus to love me. And yeah, check out that episode if you want to. You can go back, it's still there. Yeah. And Michelle was so inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Talking about, uh, how we take care of ourselves inside and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a great one. Yeah, I love that because we need each other to encourage each other to keep going yeah. or to, to push us, give that extra little oomph to, to propel you forward. That's mm -hmm. cool. Well, yeah. and talking about vision today, I, th I think that's a big question for people is, what, what is vision? You know, why, why do I need it? And we're talking about those things that you're talking about, those short-term things and the long-term things, like who does God want us to be? Mm -hmm. And what will our life look like down the road? What do we need to do today right. to help get there? So let me start by asking you guys, what, what did you both want to be when you were little? You wanna know a funny one? Yeah. Please. Let me tell you this funny little story. <laughs> <laughs> so I, my parents watched Joyce for when I was growing up. So Joyce Meyer has always been part of our home. And so I've always loved to talk about, like encourage people and stuff and kind of always wondered what I would do. So I told my parents one day, I wanna be Joyce Meyer when I grow up. Really? Oh, did you yes. really? Oh, I really did. Have you ever told her that? No, <laughs> so I need to. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So yeah. I- You've gotta tell her. I will. So I thought maybe that's what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be Joyce Meyer. <laughs> Nobody can be Joyce Meyer, but that was my goal. So then I remember interviewing for my job here and I said, I realized I probably can't be Joyce, so I'd like to work for her. So <laughs> this, I shaped yes. my vision, vision a little bit, but hey, right? Yeah. Isn't that fun? That, that's pretty cool. It is. Yeah. What about you, Jay? I had different goals. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be Joyce Meyer? I know. I didn't, but that's a good that's one. A good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Starting off, I wanted to be Punky Brewster, but not when I grew up. I didn't have huge aspirations other than I wanted to wear like one lime green sock and one hot pink sock. Those are like really big it's goals. It's good for to have life. attainable goals. It is. We're and so I reached proud. that one. You know, I was like, I am Punky Brewster. I'm the black Punky Brewster. Check like, it off. Check it off. <laughs> I did it. And then um, another one was. Uh, I didn't really want to be her, but I remember seeing Tina Turner on a <laughs> on a, a a chip commercial when I was little. A chip commercial. Yeah, and she was like, gotcha. yeah, and I was like, I don't really like what she has on, but I like what she's doing. So I kind of wanted to. I guess I wanted to be a rock star, you know, like sing and just be eclectic. So I liked her. Um, I'm not her. I like you're not Joyce, right. but I'm not Tina Turner. Right. But um, and then. One other thing, I've shared this before, one of my biggest aspirations was to be an adult woman in church. <laughs> because <laughs> Just any, any adult woman? Any adult woman that wore heels and, and pants pantyhose. Heels. Yes. <laughs> so you could swish. So my, yeah. yes. So I could make the clickings. It sounded so powerful to me. It was the clicking of the heels. And what I now know is the, sw <laughs> the swishing of the thighs. <laughs> You know, when the pantyhose broke together, I don't aspire to that anymore. <laughs> Those are changed. I didn't know that the <laughs> sound was literally their thighs rubbing together. I told Ginger today, just a little while ago, just a side note, my leather leggings sound like that when I walk. So I said, I sound like Jay's gold today. <laughs> she thought she was so pleased with herself. Right, it's, it's something kind of powerful yeah, about it. it is. As a kid, I felt it. as a kid, that's just how all of the adult ladies sounded. And yeah. so I was yeah. like, I, that's not a huge goal. That's not a lot of good vision, but uh, <laughs> I was just looking at like Tina Turner, Punky Brewster and, and thighs rubbing yeah. together. But hey, I, I made almost all of them happen. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm so proud. <laughs> Acknowledged. <laughs> How about you, G? What did you want? Oh, to be? my problem was I wanted to be everything. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to be an astronaut. I think it was because I was such a sci-fi nerd. I wanted to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> right. I'm not surprised so, by that. <laughs> I wanted to be um, an author. I wanted to be a talk show host. I wanted to be Christiane Amanpour, you know, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Those things to go out in the field and tell stories. And so a lot of that is what You're I've been able that. to do. Exactly. But I also wanted to be the president oh. and um, a lawyer because I love to argue. And so, so, oh. <laughs> so, so many things that I wanted to be. But what I love is the things that God puts in us like that, mm -hmm. you know, we're not gonna be all those things. Right. But there's a part of ourselves that is in each one of those things that he uses for our good, for our vision, for our life. Mm -hmm. You wanted to be an important part of 
ministry and what you yeah. saw those women at church being. Yeah. You know, you saw it as the, the noises that you heard of the heels <laughs> and the thighs. I thank you for trying to really give me um, purpose in that vision. <laughs> I because I was sitting here like, well, I see how hers makes sense. But I, <laughs> why did I want to be a grown lady with, with pantyhose on? Like, But I did think they were powerful. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I was like, these are some strong ladies in the yes. church. Yeah, making mm-hmm. a difference in church. So I get it. Yeah, and Erin yeah. wanted to inspire people and encourage people what she saw Joyce doing. And now you're here being a huge part of it. I, I love the way God yeah. works vision in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful the way that it comes together. And we're going to get more specific and talk about you and how you can see a vision for yourself because so many people just just can't see it. You know, they're like, I don't know what it is or I don't know how I can accomplish it. So we're going to talk more about how to reach those goals. But even more than that, how to have hope and a future Mm. um, for a vision that God wants us to have. So let's start out right now with Joyce telling us what God says about having that hope and a future. And then we'll talk about it when we come back. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us, and we, we hear some kind of violent words now, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run, everybody say run, run. with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. We all have a race to run kind of obvious what mine is. Every race is not a ministry position race, but we all have a race to run. Your race might be right now raising four great, amazing kids. I don't know, your race next week might be getting your house cleaned up and cleaning out the garage. I, I don't know, but we've all got an assignment from God. And in order to do that assignment, we need to know how to focus And let me tell you that the devil is an expert at getting people unfocused and getting them, now listen to me, trying to do something about something they can't do anything about. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. I love the fact that David was anointed to be king 20 years before he wore the crown. What happened during those 20 years? Well, let's see. Um, Hmm. Had a fight with Goliath. Had to hide for years from a wicked king that was trying to kill him every single day of his life. Had to learn how to deal with his enemies. You're not gonna wear the crown that God has set aside for you, the crown of victory for running your race if you don't know how to stand against the enemy. Amen? Okay, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, some of my favorite scriptures. Withstand, verse 8, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant, cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Everybody say, it's not going to be me. It's going to be me. Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset. Rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. Can I tell you something tonight? You're not the only one going through things. Just because people don't look sad doesn't mean they're not going through anything. Matter of fact, the more mature you get in the Lord, the less you show the strain of what you're going through when you're going through. Actually, the really mature can continue to minister to other people while they're hurting so bad they feel like they can't stand it, and those people will never even really know what they're going through. So this is where you think about what God means by a hope and a future. He has a vision for us Mm -hmm. that even when times are tough, the Mm -hmm. vision is still there. It's not like we missed it all. It's all it's all done. Um, we can have that kind of a of a holding on to that vision because God's not going to let go. And as long as we don't let go, that we can keep moving forward in it and not feel like a failure. And I think that's what a lot of people 
right now who, who are talking this out with us are thinking, I missed it. Yeah. You know, I'm already a failure. I already didn't do what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's never too late. That's the hardest time, though, I believe, to to hold on to things when you feel like you're a failure, when you yeah. feel like... Because in our minds, when we get... Like, when Joyce talked about um, in that last clip, just about how it took 20 years for David to get yeah. to get the crown. Mm-hmm. Right. 20 years. That's that was the time. vision. And he had to hold on yeah. for 20 and he, years. And, mm-hmm. yeah, he went and then so it was much. still super yeah. hard. <laughs> it was so much that went on. And so he, he could have easily felt like a failure many times Mm -hmm. in his lifespan of being anointed to getting the crown or you know what i mean so it's just so many things that happened in between because he was a baby when he was anointed exactly but that's the thing our time is not god's time and so that's the part when it's the hardest for me and i'm sure some of our friends can relate it's Mm -hmm. the hardest for me when it seems like i've missed it or Mm -hmm. when it seems like time has too far spent or it feels like I failed at something. That's the hardest for me to stay firm in my faith. That's when I want to waver and want to just give up and say like, well, I guess that wasn't, I guess what I I thought that, I guess that was me and not, you know, not the will of God. Mm So yeah. yeah, Tell me what you guys think vision is. How do you define this vision that we're talking about? Well, I think of it as hope um, for a lot of times I think of it as like goals, mm-hmm. you know? Like yeah, I think of too. vision as goals, like things that I can see myself accomplishing or yeah. the, the way that I believe God sees me or how he's shown me he sees me. Right. Or I also see vision in being around good friends that I like. I want to be like. There are things about Aaron that I have, I'm like, oh, I want to be like that of her. And I think see things in you, Ginger, that... Uh, that I'm, I want to be like that. So I surround myself with people too mm-hmm. that continue to give me more vision. Of course, yeah. when we're around Joyce, I'm like, man, whew, what a goal. Mm-hmm. You know, we always talk about hashtag goals. Like that that's what I think vision is. It's believing beyond where I am. That's good. And having hope for me being the best version of myself. And that's the version that God created me to be. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's that, it's seeing beyond your current circumstances. So for example, right now I'm in a tough spot. Vision gives me hope to look past that tough spot to see what what can, or dream, what can God bring out of this? Mm-hmm. Today, awful. But what could 10 days or a year or 10 years look like? Hmm. And it's having that hope that, yeah. like Joyce says, yeah. something good's gonna happen to me today. Yeah, It actually may not, but I'm gonna keep hoping that it is, so. And actually, it, something probably will good happen, yeah, true. you know, honestly, yeah, yeah. even That's on true. really hard days. And I, I get it. There are days that you, you can't find anything good, but if that is where our mind mm-hmm. is, that is where our vision is. We, we will find things. God will bring little winks and um, mm-hmm. encouragements throughout really hard times too. Yeah. Yeah. I think of vision also as promise. Mm. It's, it's what, God is telling me that he sees in me that I don't see in myself. Mm -hmm. That is vision. And it's a promise that he will help me get there. Yes, he asked me to do things along the way, but it's not something that is completely on my shoulders because it's a promise of God. Mm -hmm. And we work together in in getting there. Mm -hmm. But um, he's the track that I'm walking on, you know, so... um, Without God, I think vision is very, very different. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the fact that um, I would like to do this or I have goals to do this, that's all great and people may very well accomplish them. But if they fit into God's word and God's plan for your life, it is a promise and not just um, something you want to accomplish on your own. And it's entirely different. I think that's a really good point because in the world, like if you have career goals, mm-hmm. there's things I'd love to accomplish in my career. Yeah. So I can take steps to work towards them to make myself better and those sorts of things. At the same time though, like I want what God wants for me. So if this is my goal, I want to do this, but he wants something else for me or he his timing is different, I'm not going to cut someone out of the way to get there faster mm-hmm. or oh, yeah. take different steps to get to my goal because my goal should be what he wants for me. Right. So it does look very different, like you're saying. You're right. Don't 
cheat a little bit along the way. Right. Don't cut someone else off. I love that. That's yeah. a great way to look at it. Yeah. And then also with what you just said, Ginger, and, and you too, um, with God, the difference between when you have just goals, you know, from a worldly perspective mm-hmm. versus when you have God, it's his it's his problem, which is Ooh, I love so that. true. Just give it to him. It's yes. his, it's yeah. his, there's an ease. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's an ease that I have. I'm in a huge transition yeah. in a lot of different ways, you know, right now. And from a worldly perspective, mm. one would yeah. think that, girl, what you thinking? You know, like you don't have any, you know, like you don't have any, what are your other plans? I literally, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're not stressed. I really have no idea. I, have, I don't. I don't have the slightest idea. I have no. I don't. I, you know. You got me. You know. Like, I mean, I have things on paper that right. I like, but it, nothing's solidified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I honestly have an ease about it because I know that it's God's problem, and I know that He will take care of me because His Word promises that He'll do exceedingly abundantly above everything I can ask or think. I've already asked it. I've already thought it. So now I know he's going to blow my mind. And so there's yeah. an ease and an excitement that comes along, which is opposite of what I've seen my friends, you know, that yeah. don't have Jesus, mm-hmm. that stress out yeah. when things happen. Mm-hmm. So I love the fact that, hey, it's his problem, so I can have an ease about it, That's you know? so good. Which leads us perfectly into this next clip that <laughs> we're going Jay. to listen to. <laughs> Professional. Yeah, good job, Jay. Boom. <laughs> that... If we understand God's word, we have so much to learn about what we can ask of and expect from God. Let's take a listen. Think about where you're at. What are you expecting God to do for you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he does something. That's not hope. That's not really hope. It's really not. And it's certainly not faith. One of the reasons why I encourage people to be full of hope is because I don't think you can have faith if you don't have hope. Because hope is a positive expectation. And so a lot of times we say we're believing God while at the same time we've got a negative attitude and a negative confession. Well, I'm trusting God. Well, smile. (laughs) And listen, let me tell you something. I know that life is hard and that problems are real. Don't you dare sit there and think that I never go through anything because I do. A lot of times while I'm preaching, I'm going through things that nobody knows anything about. You think the devil's after you? (laughs) Let me tell you something. I have to apply these same messages that I'm preaching to you, and it's not always easy for me. But even if it's not easy, this is still the answer. And it's still what works in the long run. And unless you've got something that's working better... then it would be a really good idea to just pay attention. How many of you, it would just help you a whole lot if you just had a more positive attitude? Now, you don't want to lie in church. That's not cool. How many of you, it would help you a whole lot if you just didn't complain quite as much? Yeah, I'm working on that too. God wants to do so much in our life, but you're going to see some amazing scriptures here in just a minute. Everything is subject to change except God himself. He never changes, but he's always changing things and people. Amen? Amen. And usually when you think God is doing nothing, that's when he's working. And then suddenly you'll have a breakthrough and you'll say, oh, That was God. Well, you know what? He was working all along. You know, when when you put the fresh baked pie on the table, (laughs) the kids might just get happy then when they see the pie, but you've been working on it for a long time. You had to go get the ingredients. You had to make the pie. You had to bake the pie. You know, so God is working in your life even when you feel like that he's not doing anything at all. And one of the things that I encourage people to do, try to in every conference, is always say, even when doubt comes against you, when you feel your worst, open your mouth and say out loud, God is working in my life right now. Ephesians 3.20, you're probably familiar with it. 
God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that we could ever dare <laughs> to hope, ask, or think according to his power that worketh in us. What a great scripture. Mm -hmm. What I love so much is the fact that God knows us right. so well and his yeah. vision for us is completely tailor-made. You know, there's nothing off the rack when it comes to God's vision for us. Mm -hmm. He is never going to ask me to bake a pie and expect <laughs> anything good to come of it. And we <laughs> love him for that. <laughs> Thank you, God. It just ain't in there. And so... But he knows the different things and the gifts and the talents right. and the abilities. But beyond that, he can take our nothing and make something out of it. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's because it is God. It's because of what you were saying, Jay, earlier, that that there is nothing outside of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. When we give him everything that we are and we give him what we are not, mm -hmm. he can take anything and make something great out of it. And that is his vision for our life. Yeah, that's good. I think that God's purpose for us is very pragmatic. You know, you can read in the word and see his purpose for us. Mm -hmm. And it it's right there in scripture. But his vision for us mm -hmm. is very inspirational. Mm -hmm. It is, it of course lines up with scripture, but it is very specific for each one of us and what he's put in us. So we need that pragmatic purpose and we need that inspirational vision yeah. to come together and really be encouraged. When I was in, this was probably, it's before I moved here the first time. So like 10 years ago, I took this class at my old church and it was all about discovering your purpose in life and like, what is, what is God's destiny for your life? And so I pulled it out last night and it's this giant workbook and I had to do all this homework. And it was interesting because before we got to the point in the workbook to like figure out where you think God is leading you, a lot of it was going through like past stuff that's happened to you and working through hurt I've experienced or different circumstances that have made me who I am. Mm. And it was interesting to see, I kind of had to work through that before I could see into what God has for my future. Mm -hmm. So we kind of had to go back, right. assess that, and then... It, then it was like I was a clean slate and I could see and hear so much more clearly, here's where you're leading me now. Yeah, and it was so interesting. Good, yeah. yeah. But it was also interesting to see how those things have shifted a little bit over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So God hasn't changed in me, but some of the things I thought were f what I wanted for my future yes. are not what I want anymore. Yeah, right. I've had so many different jobs or responsibilities at the time that I did not get. I'm like, God, why are you having me yeah. do this? This yeah. makes no sense at all. But even now with this role that I have currently, I can see all of the benefits of those different things that God allowed me to be part of, mm -hmm. allowed me to learn, allowed me to experience, to bring into this big picture yeah. that made no sense at all. And yeah. now it's like, what? Yeah. God, you you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. I like can just look back and see that what you were making all along was a beautiful masterpiece. That yeah. was something that, you know, God has given me was like, I'm like, I feel like I'm going everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, but then he, you know, God has just settled me and showed me, it, it might be a, a, a picture here at, at the ministry where it just is like yarn from one, it's different color yarn. I don't remember where I saw it, but I remember clear as day seeing it where it just looked like a beautiful masterpiece. But I know I felt like I was zigzagging everywhere, yeah. you know? And yeah. so uh, one of the things that I, I love is um, is when, when Joy said, everything is subject to change, mm -hmm. but God. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I didn't know that initially because as a Christian kid growing up, I felt like if I did X, Y, and Z, that that was God's plan for me because I believed as a young girl and as a young adult that the the things that got placed in my heart from what I thought were, were the vision for my life, I thought that was God's vision. And so when those things would happen or, or those things wouldn't happen or I would get disappointed, then yeah. the whole, you know, hope deferred makes a heart sick. Yeah. I lost vision for a while yeah. because it didn't turn out the way that I thought that God said it was gonna turn out. Mm -hmm. Well, now that I'm like Joyce, like now that I'm older and I'm still growing, but now that I'm older, I know that everything that I think is the plan that God mm -hmm. has is not necessarily 
but got so there's a right. now there's a flexibility for me yeah i like that to word. be flexible with whatever god wants to do and just be kind of pliable set a vision yeah. write it but then submit it to the lord so that i can be flexible mm-hmm. so i won't be That's so good. disappointed because when i get disappointed then i can just be like Phew. Well, I there's that. You know, yeah. That's how it used to be, where I just throw it out the window, mm-hmm. you know, but now I'm focused on God and not focused on the plan and say, like, I trust you, God, over what I wrote down. And so that mm-hmm. was a maturity place that I had to get to so that I can trust God because I didn't. Yeah. I thought I did, but I didn't. We talk about being in different stages of life, and that that is true even with the vision that God has for us and where we are. Jay, you're at a point now where he's changing a lot of things in your Ooh, life. Yes. But he's not letting go of it. And his vision for you hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. He's still taking you to that place. But it looks different than you ever knew it would look. The route is different. Right. Hmm. I don't like the route. Right. (laughs) You know, like the the route stinks. Yeah. You know, and so, but I know I'm going to get wherever he wants me to go. You want to get back on the highway. Yeah. I just want to zoom, zoom, zoom. Right. All these stoplights and detours. Yeah. And construction. I don't you like don't want to have to get off to see the world's largest chair. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care about the largest chair. <laughs> but I don't even like chairs. <laughs> or the world's largest wind chimes. You know, you have just you want to get there quickly. No, but I've seen the signs. <laughs> And Aaron, for you, you're you're at a place also where you're focusing on your children being young, and yet there's still so much vision ahead that God has for you creatively yeah. and in in your um, career. And mm-hmm. He's pulling all these beautiful pieces together mm-hmm. to show you so many new things. It's really an exciting place to be. It is. I, I kind of have had to work through this recently because. I've always loved to have like, here's this big goal I'm working towards. And in the past few years, I guess probably since I've had my kids, it feels more like silence. And I sometimes mm-hmm. will ask God, like, what should I be going towards? And right. I'm getting nothing. And so I was thinking through and I thought, well, maybe now is the time for me to like continue on with the goals that I have, but maybe I'm just soaking it in and learning as much as I can. And he's going to show me, but I think a lot of times, and I think some of our friends probably experience this, we put so much pressure on ourselves, especially as Christians, to know what our purpose is. And if you don't know exactly what it is, then you probably aren't doing it right. Maybe we ask God and we move the way he's calling us to, and then we just listen Mm -hmm. and learn. Yeah. And be okay. You tell me if that's right. I don't know, but... Oh, I think you're absolutely right. From the outside looking in, I think you're superwoman. You know, like Thanks. you're doing a bunch of other things, mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel like it because it's outside of the norm that you're used to, right. you know, but right. from the outside looking in, I'm like, how does she juggle all of this with these two? And your kids are not like, you know, little quiet kids. Your kids <laughs> like to play in mud. Your, kid likes, your kids like to yes. paint your um, comforters red uh-huh. with fingernail polish. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. like it's a lot of things going on. Just really busy. They're very busy, busy but you kids. are still juggling it all. So it just doesn't look like you thought probably, but it's still, you're still forward moving. It just might mm-hmm. be, it might feel a little slower. And maybe it's not about me accomplishing the things I want to for my vision. I also want to raise little kids who know, grow to know the Lord. That's more important to me than anything is that I raise two kids that follow Jesus with mm-hmm. everything they have in them. And maybe, I, I mean, that's pretty big. And I that is vision that. for you yeah. to, to create a world where they can see God's vision for them. Hmm. I, That's good. I've got the benefit now of being able to look back, like I said, and see a lot of those things that didn't make sense and how they're coming together and and being so grateful mm-hmm. for times that were really hard and times that I didn't understand to see how God it really worked through that yeah. for his vision for me, but also to know that I am far from done. Right. You know, there's still so much that God is putting in my heart that I want to do. And I'm mm-hmm. really enthusiastic about it and very, very excited. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that whatever stage you're at, God has vision for you. Yeah. And it's it's personal vision. It's maybe um, something a, about your spiritual life. It may be something about your your goals and your, your career. It may be something about family, but God's vision covers mm-hmm. all of that. So I love that at every stage in life, God has new and fresh vision for us, guaranteed. That's so good. Yeah. 
So our last clip we're going to listen as Joyce teaches what God's word says that we will get out of being able to see the glory of God through all the different things that we're going through and expecting good things to happen along the way. Nothing's impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. John 11:40 is one of my favorite scriptures. It's when Jesus was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. And in John 11:40 he said, "Only believe and you will see the glory of God." How simple is that? Only believe and you will see the glory of God. You're going to believe something. It might as well be for God to help you. Amen. Amen. All right. Raise your level of expectancy. Start expecting more from God than what you ever have before. Right away somebody says, "Well, what if I get disappointed?" Well, the Bible says that God says, "In me you'll never be disappointed or put to shame." Now, let me explain. That doesn't mean that you're always going to get everything you want. So, there may be some temporary setbacks, but in the end you're going to look back and say, "You know what? God knew what he was doing all along." I mean, I've had many, many, many hard times in my life, but I certainly cannot stand here tonight and say that I feel one ounce of disappointment over serving God these last 40 years of my life. Amen. No matter how challenging it is, it's still the best offer that we have. <laughs> Amen. Jeremiah 29:11 says, "I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, for good and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome." Isn't that good? Everybody say, "God's got a good plan for me." God's got a good plan for me. You guys are supposed to say it with me. Don't let oh, me hang it out here. God's, God's, God's got a good, God's got a good, good plan, plan for me. <laughs> That's really hard. Yes. You know, one thing I, I love about you guys and appreciate so much is how you have helped me see things in myself and refine my own vision. And I want to encourage everyone to have those people around you, like you were saying, Jay, that inspire you. Mm -hmm and encourage you with what God has in you and for you. They can see your talents mm -hmm. when you can't see them yourself. They can see those things that maybe you dismiss, yeah. but God may be wanting to do. Have a vision team. Find those people. Have a vision team around you. And I, I just appreciate you guys for doing that so much with me. I appreciate you guys too. Oh, <laughs> it was, it was, you got to say it really squeaky. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> You're so great. It was, it's fun because... I remember so vividly the three of us sitting around a table a couple years ago talking about that. Jay asks really good questions, I like do. deep into your soul. Oh. What do you see for your life in the next year? Oh. Those kinds of questions. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but having those conversations and talking about things yeah. that we want to do and seeing things come to pass that at that point, they were just a conversation. We were just talking. Yeah. But it does. You need to have those people who are going to ask you those questions. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, I was one of those people that I was like, I, I don't really like being around ladies that much, you know? Like, <laughs> so funny. You know, I know me too. <laughs> you know, it's because then like, you know, I'm kind of a tomboy yeah. and I'm really, like, and shockingly, I'm an introvert. I don't, I, I fuel, I, I refuel like alone. Like, so, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I, I know, but look what God has done. <laughs> I know, right? But God has always put me in front of people, but then that expectation of people being like, ah, God, they expect me to be this like mm, yeah. crazy, crazy person. But um, <laughs> but these past few years, like with this relationship and several others, it's just one of those things where the older I get, the more I realize I need people in my life, be not just because I want to say I have friends or, or friend goals or best friend goals or call people besties, you know, like I'm past that. I need people in my life that can push me when I don't want to move. Yeah. Right. And that's what you guys do for me. You guys push me when I don't want to move, even to the simplest thing of like, I'm like, guys, I feel like I'm about to do this. I literally, I pray about it. I ask God. And when I text these ladies, I'll, I'll <laughs> you know, when I text y'all, like you, Ginger always has this little way of saying like, well, I'm sure you prayed about that. <laughs> I'm sure you, well, you can just trust what God said. And I'm like, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just a good reminder. And Aaron's always the type that's like, 
good 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 tell me how it ends like tell me what happens so it's just one of those things that it's just a boost to remind you of what god told you and so i encourage any of our girlfriends listening and some of the guys that sneak on here just get you some (laughs) good you know get you some good friends like you said a vision squad a vision team that can help push you forward yeah it makes a big difference Mm -hmm. and then also know the scripture yeah know what god says who you are, what he has for you, just like Joyce was teaching, all of these different things that make such a huge difference. Um, For me, Philippians 4.13, so I have this little plaque thing and it's been through so many different versions like used to be on a piece of wood and then it fell off the piece of wood and then I had it in a frame and now I just stick it to my wall but it it just (laughs) says Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I had this in my dorm room in college I've had it every place every place I've worked every place I've been I just pulled it off my wall in my office yeah and because it just reminds me of the vision Mm -hmm. that God has before me because I have always known that I have limitations, but big goals, okay? I've always kind of been driven, but I don't have everything I need to make it happen, you know? But with God, I have the strength that I need. And Mm -hmm. then the other thing, you know, is just write stuff down. Mm -hmm. Have a little journal, write down the things that God is telling you along the way. Write down your desires, your hopes, your passions, the things that you care about, because God has put those in you for a reason. Yeah. And I think one of my biggest things is don't do something that you don't love forever. Mm. There will be seasons that you're going to have to do some things that aren't your favorite. But if it is not something that God has just put in your heart that you love, don't do it forever. Work with God for that vision beyond Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. and do what you need to do to accomplish that to get there because god wants us to love what we do yeah Yeah. that's why he put that passion in us Mm -hmm. so don't settle don't settle don't settle don't um don't be don't be silly you know like don't just say like okay i just quit everything right i kind of did that but um (laughs) but i trust i believe god told me to do what i'm doing right now and it's do not move unless you know God's told you to move. But when God tells you to move, gets the step in, sister, because it's better on the other side. It's like this yeah. faith walk that I'm on right now is so very exciting, terrifying, but exciting, <laughs> you know, because I know my eyes are fixed on the fact that I know he has a greater plan for me. Because yeah. if he, mm-hmm. his word told me to ask and then he'll do exceedingly abundantly yes. above that, yeah. he'll do above what I ask or think. I'm consistent with my asking. I'm con- consistent with my yeah. praying and believing. And so I know he's going to blow my mind. And you That's did good. exactly what we're talking about because we sat and talked about what do you want? What do you what do you love doing? What do you see that you could do with all of those different experiences that God has brought you through? Yeah. And what do you think God might be doing for the future? Yeah. So you did exactly what we're talking yeah. about for this vision this for is, you. This has been a process. Like yeah. I've been praying over this for quite some time and even when I was praying I brought it to my friends too and like God do I sound crazy you know and yeah. they were like no and then Ginger of course is like you can do this and this and this and this and this and this you know and so <laughs> I just love it I love it and I'm super excited like it's not manifested yet it's not here yeah, yet sure. so the story is still being written and I'm excited about you know this next chapter Absolutely. it's gonna be fun yeah I think that's really important too is just like a practical thing for us all to do yes even every once a year or whenever you feel like it's appropriate, make a list of those things and see, does this still fit? No, I'm going to let that one go. So you can kind of like rule things out and stay focused on the things that are important and then let stuff go. And because I did that for this and I thought, oh, wait, I still do have things that I want to do. And there's some vision here. (laughs) I got some. But I think it's so helpful (laughs) to write it down. It makes a big difference. And then I truly believe if you pray and ask God, like, show me a Bible verse or scripture that you want me to stand on that I know is kind of the yes. direction you have for my life. I, believe I know that you've so got a bunch. Strongly. Yeah. I think it gives that gives me purpose. So even if my circumstances look a little bit different, I know this is what God has called me to do. So here's how You're he's right. doing it in this yeah. season, here's how it's happening in this season, but I know this is who I am. Yeah. I'm called to do. That's so great. Allow God to interrupt you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Allow God Ooh. to yeah. change your path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But stand firm on the promises. Like for me, I know without a doubt Years and years and years ago that God gave me the the verse, Philippians, Mm -hmm. in chapter one, and it's just that their joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of my being with them. And so 
that is vision for me that whatever he asks me to do, that my my vision in that is to bring his joy so good. alive in other people's lives. When I know that that is his yep. calling for me, that opens up so much, so much vision there. Yeah. And there are scriptures, I promise you, mm -hmm. that will come alive in your life because that's what the word of God does. Right. It is not just words on a page. Mm -hmm. It is alive and active and will make such a difference in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited about all this because yeah. I just wanna encourage everyone who's been part of our group with us, yeah. take these steps, start writing down the things that you love, mm -hmm. the um, talents that you have, the gifts that you have, the experience that you have, and begin praying for God to show you those yeah. scriptures of direction and what God asks you to do. I, I love this, this verse, Proverbs 29, 18, and it just talks about without hope and without vision, the people will perish. Mm -hmm. You may feel like you're just kind of languishing, right, without vision. You don't have to stay there. And if we have that vision, we get it, get a dream, allow yourself to dream big, mm -hmm. and God won't let you down. Mm -hmm. So I... I don't know. I'm. I would love to hear what everybody ends up with after we talk about all this, and they do it in their own life. Yes, I do too. It's yeah. and it's encouraging when you hear other people. Yeah, figuring out like very. I'm so encouraged by what you're doing and what yeah. God's yeah. shown you. Yeah, I'm like, okay, my turn. Yeah, what am I? It's figure contagious. Out? It, is. it is. It is. It's very contagious. And yeah. so, and one of the things that I made a rule is every day I do something, even if it's the smallest thing to 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 do my part. Yeah. You know, even with like the weight loss journey, I said every good choice, you know, that I make gets me closer to my goal, mm -hmm. gets me co closer to what I believe God has set as a vision for me for this. And so I just challenge everybody, one little thing, even if it's not a day yet, maybe it's one thing a week that you can do to start preparing. Maybe it's you filling out that paper for that LLC. Maybe it's you, you know, yeah. like it's just little practical things that you can just start doing that, uh, yeah. And I know we, we will all wanna hear about that. Yeah. Well, we also love to equip you and give you the Word of God and help you to have something practical in your hands that you can study. So we have a free resource offer for you. It's called What Do You Want Out of Life? And it's a free audio download. How perfect is that? If you go to JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out, you can get that free resource. And um, it's just a great place to start to dig in to what the Word of God says. Let that vision come alive in your life. And we also want to invite you to get caught up on all of our Talk It Out episodes, just in case, like something that we've been talking about, like you were talking about something that happened in an episode quite a while ago with yeah. Michelle. Yeah. Go back there, dig it up, and I did be inspired. Week. I needed one last week, so I jumped back for you and we listened. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff there. And you can also sign up for our email subscription list because it's just our friends list, right? We just want to tell you when we episodes do. are coming up and our share some fun things. behind the scenes stuff. And please subscribe to the podcast. Please. Please do. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we want to just end by telling you um, to please have hope for your future. Please know how much God loves you and how much he has for you that vision that we're talking about is not just for any of us it is for you and hold on to that fiercely because god will hold on to it with you even through the hard times we will see you all next time thanks for being part of our first video podcast thank you yeah it's fun all right we'll be talking to you all later bye, bye.